just over three pounds of lamb and this was lamb chops that I just cut up so there's the bones and everything in there and it's important that you use bones because you know let's face it bones means flavor and the first thing I'm going to do is salt and it may look like a lot of salt but I'm also adding potato later on to stretch this dish for more people and the lamb has been cut up and washed with the juice of a lemon um, some people they don't like using acid like uh, lime and lemon some people wash it with flour and water lemon juice has never let me down yet and the marinade is very simple man later on is when we're gonna really develop more flavor so salt and black pepper and I've got my homemade Caribbean green seasoning here and I want a heap peeping tablespoon of that boom bam in there we're gonna give that a nice little mixy mix set that aside to marinate for a couple hours then we're gonna really have some fun and I have a big cleaver big heavy Chinese cleaver that I use to cut up because let me see if I can find the bone yo that is hard that's gonna wreck your nice chef's knife so please use a cleaver something big and heavy or ask your butcher to rock this out for you um, small thing you give them a seal I'm sure they will cut it up for you all right so we're gonna leave this now to marinate in the fridge there for a couple hours this bone is already popped out so we'll cut that out and get rid of you partner oh she's stubborn boy hmm. there's always a lesson for <laughs> to be learned there yeah? everything is stubborn until the tool for dealing with it comes across but anyhow in the fridge couple hours got a nice big heavy pot now it's only three pounds or so of that that um, that lamb but I, I am adding potatoes in there and I'm gonna braise this so this is why I need something big and um, and heavy as well because you get better caramelization and flavor build up on the bottom in a heavy pan you want two tablespoons I'm gonna go with three tablespoons of olive oil now my lamb has been trimmed most of that fat is gone because it can be a bit fatty so try and remove as much of that fat as you can one medium onion thinly sliced it's going in there I've got about six large cloves of garlic you know your boy loves garlic I'm gonna hit him with another little dose of black pepper while you got the attention going there and I've got two sliced up pimento peppers optional but it adds a lovely flavor and these are what pimento peppers look like it's called a seasoning pepper it will be difficult for you to source so don't fret too much I'm going to turn my heat down now to low I started off medium high down to low and we're going to sweat everything down to release those flavors as we've done in different curry recipes before but for now a little bit of patience here it's been about four minutes now I'm gonna go in with some cumin or jira seeds and I've got something here a little bit unique to the Caribbean I would think it's called antar masala if you can't get that I would suggest going in with a teaspoon of roasted ground cumin rather than the um, just the the cumin seeds get the roasted one it will give it a different sort of complexity and flavor give that a nice little stir heat still on low yeah I'm gonna follow that up now with my curry powder and that's my own little blender uh, use your favorite blend if you're doing this gluten friendly or gluten free pay attention to the package details of the curry powder that you use some of them tend to have flour as a sort of a filler or a thickener in them make sure you move it around because the whole idea here is two things we want to cook out the rawness of the curry and we want to allow the different spices which makes up a curry powder to bloom and to release all those flavors now here's a step you may find a little bit strange however there's a reason for it I have here a medium tomato all chopped up as fine as you can chop it up get all them juices in there and the reason for that tomato going in there later on one later on it's gonna help us thicken up the gravy and two it the acidity in that tomato will help balance off things a sort of a yin and yang kind of thing going on here yeah so give it about another minute or so as that tomato slowly cooks there I want to go in with another tablespoon 
just a little over a tablespoon of that green seasoning just to heighten that herbal element but it's all a little tight up there see what's going on down there that there ladies and gentlemen is what niceness looks like got a nice little sizzle going there and you notice the the curry has gone thick the steak on a different color but we still want to cook out some of that rawness I'm gonna crank my heat up to medium and I'm gonna go in with half of a cup of water just to make sure we cook out the rawness of the curry that we spoke about earlier there let's look at that niceness there and that is what's gonna help us yo are well, they gonna be thanking me for this recipe you know the rawness I keep talking about is that sort of gritty sort of taste you get on your teeth and um, it coats your tongue, you know, it's not a nice sort of flavor. So we're going to burn off all that water now by cranking up the heat. And we have the seasoned lamb ready to go swimming in there. Now, since we turned up the heat, remember this thing will start to stick on the bottom there. And that is where flavor lives. So you want to keep stirring it. We don't want to burn the curry. We just want to, you know, make things exciting. It's almost there. It's almost to the point where we can start adding the seasoned lamb. To the pot. I'm just going to give it one more minute. I want to see this sort of separation. I don't know if you guys can see it, but where the oil where, that we started with, we start back seeing it again. Ah, there. There's a prime example of what I'm talking about. So now, yeah, we're going in with all that seasoned lamb in there. Save this back. We're going to add three cups of water to that. But we want to deglaze the bottom of the pot now with the pieces of lamb. I'm gonna crank up my heat to high because I want to bring this off and bring this up to a sort of a, a boil so we can quickly sear off the pieces of lamb. I've got a nice bubble going as you can see there. So I'm gonna turn my heat all the way down to low. Excuse me, and I'm gonna put the lid on there and let that go for about 10 minutes. It's been going for about 10 minutes now. So what we need to do is give it a stir, scrape the bottom if it's starting to, to dry down. A little bit more liquid than I want in there. So I'm going to turn up my heat now to medium high just to burn off any extra liquid. And that's going to infuse the pieces of lamb with that curry niceness. One final stir. And we've got another ingredient going there which will complement the lamb. And that is two tablespoons here. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. It's very hard and chunky at this point. Straight out of the fridge. And that is pure coconut cream. Um, pure stuff. It will be in a bar. So when you go to the grocery store, you will look for it. It'll be in a bar. Just gonna allow that to melt down in there. Crank my heat all the way up to high now. And I'm gonna go in with that three cups of water, as I said. But that is how we're gonna braise the pieces of lamb to get it nice and tender now that coconut cream there just gonna melt down and cause all kind of niceness to happen but for now we need to bring that up to a boil then we're gonna turn the heat down and we're gonna allow it to simmer until the pieces of meat of you know falling apart but before we do BAM <laughs> your little Caribbean sunshine have to make an appearance now here's the thing we try not to break it if you're afraid of pepper if you're afraid of spicy don't break it Aye man, have no fear, so they turn on breaking that. Guaranteed. But be careful, right? Be careful. Bring that up to a boil now. It's been going for 45, 4 5 minutes now. Now, here's where you're going to do a couple of things. One, you can fish that scotch bonnet pepper or habanero pepper or whatever pepper you have available that you use. You want to fish it out. Now it's done its thing. Or, in my case, I'm going to bust it. I want that heat to release in there. The other thing is, I'm going to crank my heat back up to medium because I'm going to add my potatoes in there now. Nice big pieces of potatoes. And in total, I think I have eight medium potatoes. And it's a great way to stretch this dish for a lot more people. Just cut them in half. You want to tuck them down in between all that liquid there because that's going to... And the reason why I have them in big pieces is because I don't want them falling apart too much as we braise the lamb. Lid back on, once it comes back up to a boil, I'm going to reduce the heat again and let it keep simmering away. 
It's been 45, four or five minutes since I added the potato in there. See, it's nice and thick now. And that is what I was talking about, the gravy later on when we added that tomato in the early there. I told you all later on it will help thicken things up. This is tender. First of all, you want to make sure a few sort of personalizations you're going to do. One, make sure the pieces of lamb is nice and tender to your liking. I like it falling off the bone and that is exactly where it's at. Taste it for salt, adjust it accordingly. And the gravy, make sure it's to the consistency that you like. This will thicken up a little bit further because it's a big heavy iron pot that I'm using here. So I'm gonna turn my stove off at this point. Boom, bam, stove is off. And for my greenery today, I'm gonna go in with parsley straight out of the garden. And the reason why I opted for parsley rather than shadow benny or cilantro or anything like that is I find that the parsley tends to cut. I told you all from the start that lamb can be fatty. The same thing with goat and all that too. And I find that it was like a gremlata almost where it, it cuts back the fat. Chris here, CaribbeanPot.com Lamb, well, coconut curry, lamb with potatoes. You're gonna love this one, man. You get some bread. Some roti, I say bread, gosh, what's wrong with me, boy? Some roti, some rice, all them kind of niceties there. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Yo, give this one a try, you're gonna love it, man.